create the sample the same way in which we did the VSI sample. Refer to the VSI calibration section of this video for reference. The only difference is that the fringes are at a 45 degree angle. Let's recap the steps to completing the PSI calibration. 1. Place a reference surface to field of view. 2. Adjust 2 to 3 fringes at a 45 degree angle for best focus. Step 3 is to click finish. So let's go ahead and do that. The profit number will display the results of the calibration. You need not worry about them. Remove the PSI sample and place the lid back on. You can check the hardware to check magnification, filter, and field of view. We open the measurement options window. We have to make sure that we have the same magnification and field of view in the measurement options window. We are doing a VSI measurement, so we have to select the VSI radio button. You can choose the resolution you want to do. There are options for both VSI and PSI modes. The settings for each section only matter if we are doing that kind of measurement. In our case, we are looking to do a VSI scan. So let's take a look at the VSI options. If you click on the VSI options tab, there are many choices. The 1x speed gives you higher resolution but takes longer. 5 microns is the minimum back scan at the 1x speed. You must guess the correct length of the scan. But it must be at least as large as your features. You can also select the modulation threshold. This controls how sensitive the machine is to detecting fringes. Let's take a look now at the PSI settings, but remember, the PSI settings only matter if we are doing a PSI scan, and the VSI settings will only take effect on a VSI scan. The averaging number when it's turned on will take the average of this number of scans. The modulation threshold is the same as in VSI mode. The vibration detection threshold automatically compensates for vibration. Leave the intensity selections blank, phase and wrapping at standard, reference blank, measurement filter at default, and the phase algorithm at standard. The other tabs are for advanced operation. You should not use them until you are familiar with the basic operation of the machine. In the measurement options window, you can also select intensity and calibration from the bottom of the menu. You can either click the new icon or control N to begin a scan. The machine will then show you the results of the scan and you can select different analysis options from the toolbar. One of the most useful options is a 2D analysis. This is similar to a stylus profilometer. This will show you the profile of your sample along a cross section that you choose. You can measure a step height by clicking on the triangle and moving the cursor to the feature of interest. You can move the coordinate windows. The vertical distance will be displayed on the right and the horizontal distance on the top. You can also zoom in. Position the cursors on either side of the area you want to zoom in on. Right click between the cursors and click on zoom in. All the windows you open are saved. You can select any window by going to the window menu and clicking on any window. The 3D icon gives you a 3D image of your skin area. By left clicking in the window and moving the trackball, you can rotate the 3D image. If you right click on any window, it gives you a menu. You can choose analysis options, which changes the way the machine interprets the data. Plot options allows changing the way in which the machine displays the image. In plot options, you can zoom the image, change the scale, and change the appearance. In analysis options, you can choose a variety of analysis operations. One useful operation is data restore, which interprets missing data. To save your data, go to the file menu, go to save data set as, and save your data set on the server Grover. When you save your data, you are saving all the raw data, not the window that is open at the time. When you are ready to stop using the system, remove your sample from the stage. Be sure to move the stage back in. This helps prevent injury from occurring in the lab. Open the intensity window and set the intensity to zero. If you do not do this, the light will remain on. Now you can exit out of the program by going to File, Exit, and clicking Yes.
After watching this training video, you should have a good understanding of how to calibrate a VSI sample, calibrate a PSI sample, measure your own sample, and use analysis tools. If you have any questions, please direct them to the trainer for this equipment. Do not direct your comments to Charlie.